Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph here. Now living in New York City, I'm incredibly lucky to have access to such amazing bagels. And today I'm gonna share with you a really fantastic recipe for bagels at home. Maybe you've tried them in the past and failed miserably. Well, this recipe is sure to be your favorite. So let's get started. So to get started with our bagels, we need to proof our yeast. I have one and two thirds cups of warm water. This is around 100 to 110 degrees. That's the temperature you need whenever you're proofing yeast. And to that, I'm gonna add three quarters of a teaspoon of active dry yeast to that. Make sure that you get all of it out because we need all of that wonderful yeast to create lofty bagels. Now, bagels, one of the challenges I think that most people find with them is that when they make them at home, they're kind of bready and dry and not chewy and moist like you've had them in really great bagel shops. So this recipe is really fantastic. It's one of the best recipes for at-home bagels, so I hope you try to make it. So while the yeast is proofing, I'm gonna attach my bowl here, my stand mixer bowl, to the stand mixer, and this is filled with bread flour. So I have one pound, six ounces of bread flour here, and that equates to about four and a quarter cups um, volume wise. I'm gonna put this right onto my stand mixer. And today, since we're making a really kind of tough dough, a sturdy structured dough from all of this bread flour, I'm using a dough hook here. So I'm gonna add that. And to my stand mixer, I'm going to add the yeast mixture. You can see that it's starting to become creamy. There are bubbles here kind of popping up. And this is how you know that the yeast has been activated. It's alive. It's gonna do its job in leavening these bagels so that they're nice and tender, but with really great texture. So I'm gonna add this right to the bread flour. Make sure you scrape out all of the yeast. It's really important here. Now, a secret ingredient that you should be able to find in your grocery store, you might not have come across it before though, is barley malt syrup. It has really fantastic flavor that is signature and kind of key to bagels. It really gives you that wonderful flavor that you're looking for. And this is simply one tablespoon of barley malt syrup. I'm gonna add that right in. Now, if you don't find it at your grocery store, which you should be able to, you can definitely order this online. Everything is available online these days. That goes right in. And I'm going to add three tablespoons of regular granulated sugar and one and a half tablespoons of salt. So I'm going to mix this together with the dough hook on a medium speed for about one to two minutes until we form a nice dough. And then I'm gonna knead it slightly after that. All right. So the dough has been kneading here for about five minutes in the mixer. And, and I'm just gonna finish this off on the countertop. You can see the dough is very, very moist. It's tacky, you can tell it like sticks to your fingers a little bit, but it's not sticky at all. And that's really what you're looking for, something that's super supple and moist and um, has a good amount of elasticity to it. So just knead this slightly, shape it into a ball, and I'm going to place this in a oiled bowl. And this needs to proof in a nice warm spot for about two hours. And after that, we'll be ready to portion our dough out and shape it into nice rings. We'll boil and we'll bake. All right, two hours is up and our dough has proofed up nicely. You can see it's come to the top of the plastic wrap here. Just turn the dough out onto your surface. And it's okay if you deflate the dough. I'm going to portion the dough out into 10 pieces, 10 equal pieces. And the way that I like to do it is just kind of form it into a square or a rectangle. I'm gonna cut this in half. Now, if you wanted to be really precise here, you could. You could weigh your dough out and portion it out by weight. but I'm just gonna do it this way. And then each of these pieces needs to be cut into five. So we'll take this one and we'll do one, two, three, four cuts, four even cuts to give you five pieces. Now each of these portions now need to get 
kind of rolled into rounds. And I like to just do that. There's enough oil on the surface of the dough where your hands won't get sticky. And then just place these portions on a rimmed baking sheet with a piece of parchment paper. And these little balls here need to rest for about 15 to 20 minutes, just so they're easy to shape into the bagel form. But by the time I get done with shaping these all into rounds, I'll be able to go right to the first one I've done and shape these into nice donuts almost. All right, last one here. And again, what I'm doing is just kind of pulling the edges in towards the center. Then I flip the dough over on top of itself. And I talk about this a lot, forming um, dough into balls. You really want to apply pressure to the perimeter here near the table um, or the work surface. And then you can use the sides of your hands, this part of your hand, to really force the dough into a nice rounded shape. So. These go onto your rimmed baking sheet. And now, if you wanted to give these a little bit more time to relax, if you were struggling with them, just cover them with a damp cloth. But I'm going to start with the first one I did, and I'm gonna create a nice bagel shape, which is very similar to a donut shape. So you can do this one of two ways. You can roll these out into logs and then bring the two ends together. But what I think works really well for a beautiful bagel shape is to take your thumb, insert it into the center of the dough ball that you've created, really force down your thumb, and you're gonna create a little hole in the center. And once you feel the table with your thumb, you can then pull the sides out from the center, creating a nice bagel shape. There you go. It's pretty simple, right? Not hard to do at all. And that's what's really fantastic about this recipe is that not only does it taste great, but it's not that hard to do either. So repeat the process with the remaining dough balls. And then these need to sit again for another 20 to 30 minutes before we're gonna boil them. And then we're gonna bake them and they're gonna be delicious. All right, so it's been 20 minutes and our bagels have proofed nicely. You can see they're nice and pillowy, beautiful. Now to a large stock pot here, I have five quarts of water that's almost up to a boil. And to this, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of that barley malt syrup. Um, and this again is gonna add great color and also wonderful flavor to our bagels. Now, I didn't mention this before, but barley malt syrup, it's malted barley, uh, which gives like this oxidizey, almost savoriness to the syrup that really is going to infuse the bagel with wonderful classic flavor. So mix this together. And we don't want this at a rolling boil, you guys. That's not needed at all. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna float the bagels into our liquid here for about 30 seconds. So you wanna make sure that you fit enough bagels in, but you don't really want them touching and you don't wanna overcrowd the pot. So four at a time is pretty good here. Now you can push them down slightly and even you know, splash the poaching liquid over the top of them so that they become saturated with this liquid. And this whole process of boiling the bagels before you put them into the oven really does help with the texture. It makes nice chewy bagels, but it gives a really sturdy, crunchy crust to the outside, which is kind of signature. That's really what you want. Now, bagels, we didn't really talk about this before, but what's so interesting about bagels is that they originated in Poland, but they've become so popular, especially here in New York, but in some other cities as well, like St. Louis, and also in Montreal, where the bagels are typically a little bit crunchy and they're smaller in size. So I'm just removing the bagels to the same baking sheet. Can add in more as we take out others. And while they're still hot and kind of tacky on top, I'm gonna sprinkle them with some toppings. Now you can really be creative here. I'm using sesame seeds and poppy seeds, but if you wanted to, you could use that kind of everything bagel um, seasoning that's available in a lot of supermarkets these days. You could add cheese to the top of these. I have some salt here, which is really nice, salt and pepper. Fennel seed would be delicious, or you could use a combination. I think that's the real beauty here, is you're creating something that's really amazing to your tastes. Now, make sure your oven is preheated to 500 degrees. Super, super hot oven, guys. And these bagels are gonna bake 
for 10 minutes and then you're gonna reduce the temperature down to 350 degrees for another 10 more minutes. And then after that, flip them over so that they bake nice and evenly for about five minutes more. I can't wait to show you what these look like. All right, guys, the bagels are out of the oven. Look at how amazing these look. They are, I mean, these look better than the bagel shop, right? They are cranking hot, but I wanna show you the inside, so I'm gonna carefully rip one open for you. Now, give this recipe a try. I think you're gonna love it. Look at the interior here. It is so beautiful, super hot and steamy, but amazing. Give this recipe a try. And if you have any kitchen conundrums, we love to hear from you guys, whether they're baking or cooking related, reach out to us using the hashtag kitchen conundrum. Enjoy your hot bagels, guys. And as always, guys, click like and subscribe.